Hello and welcome. So, if you watch the intro, you know what we're up to today. We're making a spaceship. A CH-108 to be precise. We're going to be working with one of my favorite materials to create a model for casting. I have plans for a few of these, so I don't want to have to scratch my own one every time I want to use it. Now, let's get to the build. Start by figuring out the main contours of the body on the styrene sheets and cutting them out. You normally want to spend some time working up detailed plans for this, but considering how often I have to do that for clients, I really just wanted to have fun with shapes. I have a pretty good idea where I want this to end up, and I can see if there are any happy accidents along the way. Styrene is great for working out complex shapes. After you cut most of the way through with an X-Acto, it just snaps along the score line. This is a really fast way to work out complex shapes. It's like making your own model kit without instructions. Then, super glue and accelerator. Just start attaching parts. Like having a bit of a story to go along with projects like this, the CH-108 is a cargo hauler made for work in low Earth orbit when zero gravity construction became more prevalent. Eventually, it became such a common ship that a lot of modifications became available. The version we're working on here has been modified for long-haul passenger transport between planets on the edge of human space. Fun, right? I've reached a point where I have the skeleton where I want it, but I need to get a little bit more sculptural. Enter the epoxy sculpt. This stuff is great. It's water soluble until the chemical reaction from mixing its two elements makes it hard as a rock. It allows me to smooth out the seams on my previous work and get a more flowing form. I want this to have a feeling of it being welded together from plates of metal. I don't want to completely eliminate the feeling of it being made from smaller pieces, but I also want to feel aerodynamic. back and forth until I get something I'm happy with. And then it sanding time. So much sanding. So much. Just a lot of sanding. Still sanding. Brought out the drum. Still sanding. After making a metric ton of dust, my table needs a clean. I decided to forego kit bashing on this project and only use the parts I made. But I just didn't want to deal with making multiple cones out of styrene sheets for the engines. I don't have a lathe, so I 3D modeled and printed them. My thought is that the body is the common part, and the back end has a few different varieties depending on how it's been modified. Might make a few different parts sometime that can put in the place of engines. For this ship, it has an attachment designed by a company that can be welded on to make it be able to travel interstellar distances. Something the original CH-108 was never designed for, but thrifty captains have taken full advantage of in this kind of nearish future world. We also need an airlock. I figure that airlocks become somewhat standardized so various ships can dock in space, so I make this a separate part I can cast up for other ships. And with that, I think we can call this ready for casting. I decided to get fancy into a two-part mold. This goes great, and I totally don't have to make a second mold off camera. up some silicone that I have around from another project. Fully recommend Reynolds if you're in the market. 
been buying from them for years and have nothing but good things to say. The Burbank store is a great place to get questions answered if you're new to casting. They didn't sponsor this in any way. I just like their products. After a day of casting, I have quite a few of these to play with. and a few other bits and bobs to trick out the CH-108 to be space ready. Then we have another round of sanding time. The resin poles require a bit of cleanup, so I pull out my sanding box. I made this to attach to a shop vac to pull the worst of the dust out of the air. This is no replacement for proper PPE. Always wear a respirator when sanding. Then it's back to epoxy sculpt to fill out gaps and attach the engines. The green stuff is milliput. This is fast becoming one of my favorite epoxy sculpts. It had been in my kit for a while, and I'm wondering why I'd never touched it until now. I drill a few holes in the nose for thruster details. I left this off the casting model because it was just too small of a detail to be viable without a pressure pot. Moving into paint, I primed the ship a work vehicle yellow. I have a can of this Tamiya color left over from a tequila commercial a few years ago and I've been looking for an excuse to use it. start by masking some of the larger colors to get clean edges with my airbrush. It's fiddly, but it takes a lot less time than the struggle of getting a good edge with a brush at this scale. My airbrush, as you can see, was struggling a bit, but I finally got a good stream going after some fiddling. Then I moved back to a brush to get the base colors and weathering. decided to print up a bunch of water slats. I made branding for the ship. The CH-108 is of course manufactured by Alltech Industries. However, the engine block is a proprietary interplanetary drive produced by a better technology solution. I don't think I named the company just to be able to put BTS in my SEO. Probably. I throw on a variety of other safety and warning labels and clear coat it matte. Looks a lot better matte. do a final pass of weathering and a little bit of metallic chipping and I call it good. And here it is in all its glory, the CH-108. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting like and subscribe. There are more videos like this on the way.